All right, I want to announce some new tour dates for you guys. Okay. I want to announce these tour dates right now. Wednesday, March 22nd, we have a new show added uh, for Houston. It's a new venue at the Bayou Music Center down there. That's March 22nd, Wednesday at 8 p.m. Um, and then we're going back to Boston. We're coming back for another week, March 31st. Uh, at the Hampton Beach Casino Ballroom. That one's in Hampton Beach, New Hampshire. Um, that's uh, Friday. And then Saturday, we will be uh, in Medford, Massachusetts, Saturday, April 1st now, which is just right outside of Boston um, on April 1st. And uh, Sunday, May 14th, uh, we have the Beacon Theater in New York uh, City. And then uh, Friday, July 7th, we have now added the Encore Theater, another show in Las Vegas. Uh, that is the day before the UFC fights. If you are going there for UFC, um, you can come to the show the day before. And all those tickets is available at theovon.com slash T-O-U-R. Uh, make sure you're going through there uh, to get tickets. And thank you so much uh, for the support out there in the world. What's up, guys? My name is Theo. I'm a human being. Um, happy just checking in about life right now. Uh, what's been going on recently? Um, I've been feeling pretty good recently, you know, uh, honestly. Uh, it's a little scary. You know, I get a little scared sometimes when I, I think when things are going well. Or when things are feeling good. Um, it's like, you know, I, I kind of, I don't know how to handle it. Uh, I think there's a little part of me that feels like, oh, you, well, you don't deserve it. Or there's, it's not, something's wrong. I think I'm just so used to the feelings inside of me over the years not being uh, good ones. That I, I'm so... Uh, that those are the footprints I still, I, I'm, those are the footprints I, I continue to walk in, you know? And so re only recently have I felt like I'm kind of making some new shapes in the mud. I mean, things are kind of going okay. Um, And yeah, it's just such a foreign, it's a, it, it's just been foreign to my life to, to feel okay. It's been foreign to me. Um, and sometimes there's a part of me that doesn't want to, that doesn't want to be, it doesn't, that doesn't want to feel okay. If I'm real honest, um. There's a part of me that always wants to have something wrong. There's a part of me that always wants to be able to look at the world or look at myself or look at my past and say, I told you so, you know, um, so it's, it's scary almost to be like, I think everything's kind of okay. Because it feels kind of new. Um, but yeah, I just, I uh, just wanted to kind of check in uh, with some of just some, you know, I like feelings. I like most of my life. I really have been. Uh, I'm kind of addicted to my own feelings, I realize. You know, I even notice it when I go to like these recovery meetings and stuff. I'll be in there and people are talking about uh, being addicted to a drug or an alcohol or something. And over, over the years, I, I've been addicted a lot of times to my own feelings. It's like I start having a feeling and then I'll start sipping off that bitch. You know, I start feeling one way and then I'll, I'll, I'll buy an eight ball of my own feelings almost. I'm like, oh, well, I'm going to better, better do a couple grams of this depression 
I'm, I better do a couple uh, lines of I'm not enough. I, you know, I can get I can get that that my feelings become almost the drug that I'm using. I don't know if that makes any sense. Uh, and that's OK if it doesn't. I'm just. I'm just saying what's going on. Um but what's up? Nice to see you guys. Nice to be a part of your life today. Um, I'm happy to be alive. Uh, I miss my brother. Uh, I've been thinking about him a lot recently. He's alive. I just miss him. Um, what else? Uh, I went to the Super Bowl the other day, which I can't even believe I'm just saying that so casually. But dang, I you know, I went to the damn Super Bowl, uh, which was fine. It was good. It's almost a little you get, you know, you go to the Super Bowl and it's such a business. It's such a corporate deal. You know, everybody there is, you know, smells like they're a briefcase or, you know, has a um business account or something, you know, or is, you know. Everybody claims they're friends with like, uh, p- p- you know, uh, Puff Diddy or Jeff Gordon or some shit or Guy Fieri. Everybody's like, oh, you know, I got, you know, I got seven autographed uh, spatulas from Guy Fieri. I'm like, all right, well, chill out, you know, Big Daddy or whatever. But it's like. Uh, there's a lot, it's, it just feels like a real businessy event so much so that you almost feel bad for the players on the field because it doesn't seem like it's about the game that much. They stop in the game every 30 seconds. They got, they're selling a toaster. They're selling a Nintendo. You know, they got, they put a new, uh, hearing aid and, you know, in big Ricky, the, uh, offensive top you know um tackle and they're you know look at ricky you know ricky hears his dog for the first time or whatever you know ricky hears a uh someone open a lunchable for the first time ever you ever hear you ever see those videos they'll be like uh you know uh disabled veteran hears um a wolf howl or, you know, or Native American, uh, disabled Native American hears wolf howl for the first time. And they'll have a, uh, they'll have a disabled uh, N.A. out there. And he's all feathered out or something. Or he's washing his feet or something. And he doesn't know what's going on. And then they put that earpiece in him. And then he, they show the fucking wolf. And then the guy, like, looks up for the first time, you know. And probably starts jerking off. I mean, if I, I got to if I'm, this is no judgment, but if I'm here, if I've never heard anything my whole life and I hear a fucking wolf set it off, dog, I mean, you got a damn, you got a pretty, you got to come soon. I feel like how, I mean, that's as native and natural as you can get. Um, But anyway, yeah, it was just very corporate. You know, every 30 seconds they're stopping it and selling something and it just gets real corporate to the point where you're like, you almost, it's hard, it's hard to even pay attention to the game. There's so much going on. Uh, but I felt grateful to be able to go and have that experience. I went down there with, um, with the Raising Canes with some of them Louisiana boys. So that was very exciting. Uh I mean, I just can't believe I got to go to the dang Super Bowl. I was sitting there, and Caleb Presley was there, and you know I'm a fan of his, and um, and it was just interesting, you know, and just like, dude, I can't believe I'm at the Super Bowl, you know. It was just, I don't know, kind of blew my own mind. Oh, but here was the thing that happened that made the weekend amazing. Uh, I got to meet Drew Brees, man. I got to meet Drew Brees, and I was over there with David Spades, and y'all know David Spades, okay? One of my heroes, and one of America's heroes. I mean, he's the damn Davy Crockett of humor. 
Um, and he invited me over to a party. It was a fundraiser. They're raising funds. And um, so we go there and it's nice. There's like, there's like rich people and somebody's, somebody was like being real rich and then somebody was next to him and they were, you know, so they started crying and the other person's like, don't cry, you're rich, you know? So people were just being fucking rich in this place. And, um, and so we walk up and Blake Shelton is there. And I like Blake Shelton, man. I like Blake Shelton. Um, he is an Oklahoma guy. And he, uh, you know, he just sings and he's comfortable, man. And I've met him before. And uh, and I, I, I like him. I like him. So anyway, we walk up. Blake Shelton is playing. It's like, it's like the part in the evening at a party where somebody is playing music. So everybody kind of has to be quiet. And we walk up and there's a guy, Steve Mariucci. Okay, he's a uh, coach. He's a coach and I want to say he's Italian. I'm not trying to be racial or anything, but that's Italian, you know. And he looks Italian, you know. He looks like if you if you tickle him, he'll fucking just, he'll tell you all the ingredients of a cannoli, even if he doesn't want to. You know, he just has that, that look to him and. I walk up and he, Steve Mariucci is talking to Drew Brees. And I've had dreams in my life, in my head, where I'm like, how do you meet? Do you ever meet Drew Brees? Does God want you to ever meet Drew Brees? You know, does Mother Nature, is there ever another flood? And one of y'all gets flooded right up next to the other one. And you get to finally meet. Um... And so there he is. And I would and, and so when you're with David Spade, David Spade can kind of just go up to anybody and like be like woo, woo, woo. and people are like happy about it. So I'm just kind of milling around in the distance, being like, hey, look at David Spade. And um and so anyway, he walks, Spade walks up, and I'm just kind of like in his shadow, like kind of there, but hiding, but trying to be like confident, like, okay, how do I? How do I walk up to Drew Brees? You know, do I look like, uh, do I look right at him? Do I kind of look, you know, at the moon? Like, what, you know, how do you do it? Do I, you know, put my shoulders even? Do I kind of like be like one shoulder is heavier? Do I, what do I do? You know, and I was nervous, man. And so David kind of starts joking and they're both excited to see Spade and they're, talking to him and I'm right there and I know at some point it's coming around that Spade is going to introduce me. So I'm like, what, do, you know, how do I, <clears throat> how do I look when they, he's like, Hey, this is the, and I'm like, do I smile? Do I, so I don't know what to do. So I open my mouth, right? Which is insane. I think that's an insane, you know, you're me. Okay. That guy's mouth open. And then <clears throat> I put both hands out like this. Like, if you know, if you ask somebody how long is something, they say, oh, about one foot long. That's what I did. He like, David introduced me to each guy and I, it was almost like you had given somebody, uh, it was almost like that guy maybe in, what's the sport maybe, uh, is that rugby or cricket when the guy does that you know anyway so i did two hands i two hands shaked mariucci and and breeze and so out the gate i'm like oh god this you know i'm not doing that good hey i'm not doing good you know and i started just kind of praying for myself um which you're not supposed to do i know that you know you're supposed to pray for others uh but i did i I needed, I needed it. And I was right there. And I'm like, what do you say? When do you say something? Do you say anything? Who are you? Are you someone that says something soon? Or are you not? Do you just listen? Do you laugh? How loud do you laugh? Do you laugh? You don't want to sound like a fake, you know? Uh, so anyway, I'm just being alive. And, um, and Breeze is dialed in, bro. When you're talking to him, 
he's like, you can see in his eye, bro, he could play for, I think another, I think he could play for another 20 months in the NFL. Well, he's just, he, he's so locked in. Like you're talking to him and you can see he's watching like where the waiters and the bus boys are going. You know, he can see the, um, you know, that one of the waiters is running an out route to go on a smoke break. He can see that the bus boy did a curl, but, you know, short of the sticks. You can, t I mean, he's like, he's caught, you know, he's got an audible. He's got Colston going over. There's everything. He's, he is monitoring everything. While you're there talking to him, he is dialed in. He is dialed into life. And you don't even know if Drew Brees blinks. That's how much he, he blinks when you blink. He sees you blink. So that's when he, that's when he blinks. He ain't missing a moment. He's locked in. And it was interesting because, um, I asked him, I said, Hey, did you guys ever play against each other? Him and, um, Mariucci. Right. And, uh, and Breeze was like, yeah, we sure did. And if he rattled off the date. He rattled off the score. Um, and it, you could just, I mean, he is just an anthology of, uh, of precision. Is kind of how I would describe him. As much as I got to, you know, I, 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 got, I got to talk with him for maybe about 10 minutes total. And maybe a 90 seconds, I could kind of feel my arms and legs uh, while I was doing it. So a lot of time I was just pretending to, you know, have a stable, um, uh, what's it called when they, oh, pulse. So anyway, that's a lot about Drew Brees. But um, we're going to take some calls that came in from you guys. Um, what else? I'm going to... I got to meet, oh, I got to meet, I know I'm name dropping, man, but I just was so like, uh, George Kittle and I'd seen like videos, of George Kittle and, but he, there's it, that it's like, it's a me, it, he, there is, it, it, uh, I don't even know. It's you got it's George Kittle is um he is an interesting guy. He's got his energy. He shows up at a level where you're like, oh, I didn't know they had this level. You know? Um, but he was very kind. I'm I'm friends with his sister Emma uh Kittle, who is a yoga instructor, and she's uh really incredible. And uh she taught me yoga in Nashville. And um so it was just really great. I got to meet uh, their whole family. Um, yeah, we're going to get into some calls. We got the Kai the Hitchhiker. Uh, we're going to talk to the attorney about that finally. Um, I got served some papers the other day. I mean, a man came and served me papers. So we're going to get into that. We're going to listen to some of you guys' calls. Um, I want to let you know that Manscaped is now selling beard products. That's right. They've gone from waist to face. To help you replace that bulky razor with their brand new Beard Hedger Pro Kit. This kit is about to change your life. It's made it easier than ever to craft your signature look. You can really just, just, just Vincent Van glorify your face. No more drawers full of 20 different guards. That's right. The trimmer has a titanium coated T-blade that is tough on hair but smooth on your face. They'll do it. The Beard Hedger, it's a juggernaut of fixing faces. Uh, it has a rotary wheel that gives you 20 haircutting lengths, all with one guard, so no more mess. The Pro Beard Kit also comes with three free gifts, a beard brush, comb, and scissors to ensure your beard is ready to impress. So get 20% off and free shipping with our code Theo at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use our code T-H-E-O. The Manscaped Beard Hedger Pro Kit, the premier solution to face grooming. This new year, you've got goals. You've got goals. We've got goals. And Factor is here to help you achieve every one of them. 
Fuel up fast with ready-to-eat, nutritious meals delivered straight to your door, leaving you time and energy to tackle everything on your to-do list. Achieve and maintain your 2023 goals with Factor. Get America's number one ready-to-eat meal kit and start saving time eating well and living your best year yet. With 34 chef-prepared, dietitian approved weekly options, there's always something new to try. Whether it's keto, calorie smart, vegan and veggie, or protein plus, uh, Factor can handle it. They've got it for you. Head to factormeals.com slash Theo50, that's T-H-E-O, number five, number zero, and use code Theo50, Theo50 again, to get 50% off your first box. That's code Theo50 at factormeals.com slash Theo50 to get 50% off your first box. You know, it's funny. Sometimes I, don't, I get on here and I don't, I don't know what to tell you about. I don't know what to share with you. I don't know what to... Um, you know, the whole time I was talking to Drew Brees, I could see him just... He was always, every now and then he would glance in the distance and just see if Devery Henderson was open. That's all. That's all I'm going to say about that. Um, the news, man. Let's get into a little bit of news. The Ohio uh, train derailment. A train derailment in East Palestine, Ohio, prompted an array of false and misleading claims on social media. You know that. Um A Norfolk Southern train left the tracks while traveling from Madison, Illinois to Conway, Pennsylvania. Uh, residents were ordered to evacuate. An evacuation is hard. It seems like easy. Yeah, you get in your car, truck, or camper and drive. But where do you go? Traffic is full. You know, if you don't have gas already, then you have to go wait for gas first. So then you're at the pump. You're pumping gas and you're huffing gas because the, the, the atmosphere is filled with it. And then there's all kind of rumors that, it, you know, that how it got burned off. Some people say that the government showed up and did it. Some people say there were just, uh, you know, a couple damn Browns fans or, or uh, Steelers fans firing um, fireworks into it and shit and blew it all up. I mean, you can't keep a gas in the air, you know, in some of these areas without somebody lighting it. You know, even if you're at a party. And you fart, somebody will run over there and light it if you're in Cleveland. I mean, who, you know, who are we kidding? You know, so I'm not shocked that it got lit up. I think a lot of people are, are, are freaked out. They had a man yelling at the sky. I'll tell you this. The whole thing was better than any M. Night Shyamalan movie I've seen in fucking 10 years. Has anybody been given more opportunities than that guy? Um, then you have all these people with their home values. Now they're scared that they have no equity in their homes, but just because of the fear of this. And you don't know, you know, we live in a space now where we expect things to be done quickly. We're so you, you see something on the internet, you see, okay, this should be solved right now. And in some ways it should, there should be like task force should be sent to help. You know, there should be plans in place for things. Um, but the speed of life is not the same as the speed of the internet, the speed of social media. You know, it's easy for somebody to be like, help these people. Right. And I even do it on Twitter. The other day I shared something. It was like, where are the, uh, like transportation head of transportation? Where is the. Norfolk Southern people like just trying to I guess I'm just rattling the cage but yeah you wonder like how, how do these people start to feel okay when they go to like a town hall meeting and they're just yelling at a mayor and he doesn't know um but it's scary you know the rail system has been we've done a horrible job in America of taking care of our rail system of taking care of our postal system? Eeps. Dude, I would rather give my shit. Dude, more people, the rail system, first of all, more people are going on 
Hogwarts train than on any Amtrak. That's a fact. More people are lining up for Hogwarts. So, I don't know. It's just heartbreaking, man. You see that out there. These people got derailed. And a lady, it says right here, throwing rock and water. And she looks insane, this lady. And she's saying, look at all the chemicals in the water. Yeah, but that's just damn water, too, lady. I mean, I know it's bad over there. If you're over there, hit hit the hotline. Let us know. 985-664-9503. Um, but I think a lot of this falls back on, do you feel like your country cares anymore? Do you feel like, I think we li- we're living, we're getting into a space where people do not feel supported by their country. They don't feel like there's this, they're always used to feel like this texture behind us that our country was unified and supporting us and looking out for the the regular man and woman oh and and the, and the child who was getting a pail of clean water in east palestine as opposed to the big business you know um big chloride or whoever spilled all this shit and then now you got a lady And the water looks wow. Cu- Look at all that. Look at it. It's all in the bottom of the creek bed. Yeah. I mean, you don't know also. They could have. Uh, we don't know. You don't know a video. Somebody. This thing could be right outside of a Pet Boys. And they've been spilling shit back in there for years. I'm not denying it. I'm just saying that. Who knows? But yeah. There'll be shrimp coming out of here probably a decade from now. Wearing a fucking top hat. You have a, you know, in a neck brace. It's all going to be bad. Newborn babies come out with fucking, you know, in with neck braces on their knees. It's going to, who knows? Who knows what's going to happen? A lot of, you know, they're going to have a lot of young women that look like Rob Gronkowski probably. Who knows? We don't know. But uh, we're there with you in spirit. What else can we be? That's all we can be right now. Um... All right, as some of you guys know, uh, uh, um, Kai the Hitchhiker, who is a notorious um, inter- uh, figure in entertainment, I guess. Um, he's a homeless, uh, or not homeless, he's a vagabond. He is a uh, tumbleweed with a... Um, with a with a bit of violence of, that surrounds him. That's all I'll say. Uh... He filed a lawsuit against me for a TikTok clip that was put up or Instagram clip um, that I didn't create, that I shared. And uh, I wanted to talk with um, my buddy Dan Morgan over at the Morgan & Morgan attorney firm, um, at the Morgan & Morgan law firm, and see uh, what the deal was. So let's, let's make that call now, if we can. Hello, this is Dan. Hey, Dan, man. What's up, bud? It's Theo. Hey, man. What's going on? Uh, Well, I sent you, you know, I got served. Um, I want to talk about the Kai, the uh, hitchhiker thing. Yeah, 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 for sure. I, I got those documents. I reviewed them actually over the weekend. Yeah, man. Is So is it a real, uh, is it a real thing? Like, is it, I'm just, I guess I'm kind of. I don't know, you know, I, I guess I'm scared. I'm yeah, I'm scared about it. I don't know what to do. It, it is real in the sense that he did file it. He did uh, make some claims. He, he's currently incarcerated, uh, I believe, in New Jersey, it seems. And he kind of learned the law a little bit and drafted up this complaint. So it is an actual complaint that did get served in federal court. Um, you know, as far as the merits to it, I don't think there's much there. I think a motion uh, to dismiss will kind of clean it up for you. Okay. Um, so what do, do I, uh, how, what is he asking for? So he's making some, some pretty egregious claims in there. I mean, he goes into all, it's a lot, it's a lot of TMI really about his other cases and his other, his other legal trouble that's going on. But then he pretty much does some type of algebraic equation that, that gets to a, a demand request somewhere around $30 million. I think it's around twenty twenty nine thousand seven hundred and fifty thousand something around those damages. What? 
from YouTube and Instagram views. Well, what do I do? I must have to work. I mean, do I have to work forever or what? I mean, it sounds like he's claiming you've already made this money. So the question is, what have you done with all that money? Dude, what is he talking about, dude? I fucking have a, I drive a Ford Ranger. <laughs> he's saying you made all this money off using this, uh, this deep fake of him. You've, you've, you've stolen his, uh, his valor, so to speak. I didn't uh, make stole it. His name. He's Sorry. saying it's a mother. Do oh, no, you're all good. Yeah. He has this whole outlandish theory that you have a, a, a fake identity d daughter account where you made this and then repurpose it to then, oh. to then uh, post on your YouTube and without having to be the point person that he could go after. Wow. It's like a 30 page manifesto complaint. He, he's, he's, he's doctored up from, uh, from this federal penitentiary. So is this, so, so what, so when do I, how, what, how long do, when do I need to, when do I need to do something? So it looks like you got, like a, he, he served you about eight days ago or so. Like uh, you have 21 days per, per federal civil procedure. So, you know, just, just an answer pretty much saying, you know, this is a bogus lawsuit, a motion to, to dismiss and a judge should just throw, just throw it out for you. But you do have okay. to kind of make sure you get those timelines done or else there could be a default judgment where old Kai could get a check from Theo for $30 million. Well, he's never I, – I don't know where he would cash it. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. Uh, <laughs> Am Scott, I think, might take it. <laughs> yeah. um, okay, so what do – do you does, uh, does y'all's law firm help with that or is that something I need to do? That's something that I can help you get get to the right person to do. You know, we're we're, we're more like a plaintiffs type firm. We don't really do this defense work, but I can definitely get you in the right hands out there with a California okay. uh, federal attorney to get this thing cleaned up for you. Okay. Jesus, dude. Yeah, I can't. I mean, I, I, um, and is yeah, this is this going to be like a thing that happens in the world? Because this was a, a deep fake that I didn't have anything to do with. I mean, obviously, I repurposed it and put it out, and I think it. I thought it was funny and entertaining. So I don't know if there is some responsibility there. I don't know. Exactly, and when you kind of sent this over to me, I kind of started doing some research, and it, it's obviously a thing that's popping up more and more now with technology getting as it is and you just really put in any video with any picture and it, and it turns it out but you know pretty much it falls under some copyright exceptions where where it's parody it's an ultimate defense so um you know it's it's art it's parody it's not meant to be real you know there's some protections out there especially like political figures and mm -hmm. revenge porn stuff like that where there's been laws that have been put put into place for deep fakes but as far as you know this type of stuff is really it's just parody where where, where there's no real recourse or damages that can be assessed for it wow it's interesting because it's it, that's gonna. I mean, with with CGI and that sort of this kind of thing, it, this is gonna be probably a growing field. Oh. Yeah. Oh, it's popping up. Yeah, because I mean, they got you know when when the political race is around, they'll just take the whatever party they don't like and just have them saying some outlandish, you know, <laughs> outlandish comments like you know, crazy stances, and they put it out there on YouTube and it gets retweeted, and that's thing you know, it becomes fact. How cr I mean, how do we? What does the future hold? I mean, even now, it's like it's. I mean, the, the videos are getting better and better. The, now they even have it where you can type in, you know, manifestos or lyrics, and it will spit it out in the person's voice too. So it doesn't even have to be a recording them saying it. It's just you know, it's copying their vocals now and spitting it out. Yeah. Yeah, we've just been talking about some of that recently, that chat GPT, I think it's called. And when that merges with like holograms or deep fakes, it's going to get – I mean, it's going to get really strange, you know. I, I saw a thing a while back where they had so much footage and um, audio of Joe Rogan that they could make him have, they could have audio of him now saying absolutely almost anything in the world. Oh, exactly, yeah. That, and that, that's how they have all these politicians not to that make these speeches, you know, three speeches a day. They're just downloading it all. And said, hey, let's make them say, you know, Listen to like other like like Howard Stern in the past it would take I mean you know, years to chop up something to have it even not even sound now you just type it into a into a chat bot and it spits it out in thirty seconds. Yeah, man. I mean, all we cared about was make them say uh na 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 na, <laughs> and it's just changed so much. Um, is this is this going to be a field that you guys will cover a lot uh, at Shell's law firm, or is this? I mean, if there was some, if there was damages against the natural plaintiff, where if there was some real harm that was done, and mm -hmm. you know, and, and something came from it, you, we definitely look, 
look into it. Mm -hmm. Um, but as far as just these celebrities having deep fakes made and stuff like that, you know, it's probably something we're going to stay away and just see how the, the, the law evolves around it. Amen. Dude, thanks so much, man. I appreciate it, bro. It's definitely been spooky. And yeah, the guy came up and served the papers and I thought it was like a dude, like a, I don't want to say like a homeless dude, not home. I mean, he was like, yeah, they're sneaky. Those process servers get sneaky with it, bro. I thought it was like kind of a gay, <laughs> like kind of a, a dude who was being kind of homoerotic or something. Cause he kind of just, he, he was hitting on you. What he, he was hitting on you. He, I mean, he just like kind of moseyed up. I thought he'd written me a poem or something. And then, <laughs> yeah. uh, yeah, and then he hit me with that and he kind of like, he didn't give like any, your head. yeah, yeah, kind of like it was just I don't know, bro. But I'm trying to meet a wife yeah, I one day. Contact, kind of walked up to you, boom. It was just surprising. I'd never really been served any papers. I'd seen it happen a lot, but I'd never got them myself. So it was almost kind of nice, dude. And it was almost like a Valentine in a weird way, <laughs> right? Yeah, someone was thinking about you. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> These days, that's nice. Uh, Dan Morgan, thanks so much, man. I appreciate it, brother. Anytime, man. I'm always a call away. Yeah, thank you so much, dude. Uh, I'll chat with you soon. All right. Sounds good, my man. All right, peace. If you have a question about a legal issue, you have a um, something that you think they might be able to help with, uh, the least I can do for that, uh, for the help there, is um, to put their information uh, below. You know, it's scary. It's scary when something comes along or when uh, there's something in the legal realm and you don't know what to do. You know, this, that can be spooky. Okay, let's get into some calls if we can. Uh, here we go. As always, the hotline is 985-664-9503. Yo, Theo, my name is D-Rap. I'm out here in Indiana, you know, home of the mess. D-Rap, thank you for calling, brother. Onward. Home of the fucking cord. And, uh, you know, I just had a question, man. So I got a friend, and he's my best friend, one of my best friends. We started becoming friends a few years ago. Man, he's been cheating on his girlfriend, and I don't really like any of that. And I told him, man, I need, I'm going to need to tell your girlfriend if you're cheating on her, man. I'll give you a week to tell her. Man, that week went by, and I told him, I was like, man, I need to tell your girl. He's like, man, don't worry about it. We're not getting broken up. So, you know, like, what do I do in that situation? Like, I don't want to tell his girlfriend because he's my homie. But at the same time, I hate cheaters because my dad cheated on my mom back in the day. And, you know, that shit really fucks me up. And I've been cheating on him, so. Meth or corn, baby. Meth or corn. That's a lifelong question, brother. I feel you. I think you gotta. You can definitely say to your buddy, hey, not cool to cheat on this gal. I don't know if you go tell the gal, though. That's a little bit snitchy. That's a little bit like I'm going to take responsibility. Um, you know, it's not. that's not your world. Um, so, I, I mean, it's your world, but it's not. I don't know. That, to me, feels like. You're trying to control too much of things. Now, maybe if it goes on for a long, you know, I, it's so tough to know, but I feel like that's a little bit uh, more of a thing you take up with your boy. That's what you do. You take it up with your boy. Hey, man, I don't think this is a good thing. You know, I wish you wouldn't do this. Um, but then also, I mean, who knows? You know, it's tough. If, if, if You may have a feeling for that girl. But I don't know if that's the way to go about it. I would start with your boy, man. I would just say it again. And then if you put a week on him and you didn't do nothing, then you're not even really about it anyway. So if you're going to be about it, be about it. You know? So I would say, man, I can't, you know, if you're going to be, uh, uh, that's not the vibe I like to put out there. It's not something I want to be associated with. Then that's fair. But then you got to stand by that with him. If you just tell him every week, hey, man, don't be cheating or I'm out of here. And then you stick around. You know. Then, and then you going to tell her that you, you ain't even you ain't even do nothing. So praise God, baby. Thank you for calling. That's what I suggest. Also, I don't know a thing, man. 
you know, I've been a cheater. I've cheated on people and I don't know. It's fucking, it is no, it's no way to treat somebody. I know that. Um, but praise God, baby. Let's see what else we got. Um, all right, let's take this call. As always, the hotline is 985-664-9503. Hey, Theo. Um, I'm calling. I ha- I work in a uh, learning center. and the- That's a school, baby. That's a school. Onward. These past few weeks, I've been having... There's just been... I work with special ed kids, and, uh, you know, it's... Oh, yeah. I know what you're talking about, brother. I was in special ed, baby. Let's hear more. It's it's a job. It, it gets stuff done, but recently there's been a kid named James. He has autism. Mm-hmm. And uh, recently he's been trying to uh, sexually assault me. That adds up, baby. Uh, Yeah. I mean, I feel like if somebody... I don't know how to say this. First of all, a lot of people named James have... You know, they're tismed out. And that's... You could draw a damn graph of that. And, uh... And it would check out. But. uh, What are we talking about? Um, Let me play it again. Recently, there's been a kid named James. He has Mm, autism. Mm -hmm. And uh, recently, he's been trying to uh, sexually assault me. Yeah. Well, look, if people have autism, they're going to want to fuck. They want to get out that damn... You know, they want to fucking burp that little nut wand, baby. You know, they, they, I mean, sometimes you just, I feel, you ever just been so just, you just want to spray on something. So I can't even, if I had autism, I'd, I'd, if, you know, if I had fully documented autism, I would be, I'd spray on half the things in town, probably. Let's hear more. And, you know, I don't really care, but it's more frightening for the other students. Yes. And the thing is, you know, I know they can't help it and stuff, but every time he does it, he just has this look in his eyes. Oh, yeah. This lustful, evil look. Well, they say if, if, uh... They say if the devil's got your nuts, he's got your eyes. Because the eyes are just the nuts of the face. So, yeah. The feeling you have in your nuts is always the feeling that you have in your eyes. Go punch somebody in the nuts and look in their eyes. Same pain, baby. And yeah, look, it's tough, man. Look, first of all, I commend you for being out there and being on the front lines of um of special ed. You know? Uh, let's hear more. Almost like he knows what he's doing and if he knows that it's wrong. Mm-hmm. And he'll be, you know, he'll be running around and he'll be... Stop that, James. Stop it, James. Please stop. And, you know, he'll be helicopter in it. Oh. And it's just, it's scary. And we're a little, we're a little afraid for our safety. Well, let, hold on. Let's don't get crazy. Let's, you know. I mean, just, you know, you don't have to be afraid for your safety, dog. You got a, you know, you got a mentally unwell fella just, you know running around trying, you know. I mean, he's probably in heat. Have you thought about that? It's spring, baby. It's almost spring. It's going to be spring in a few months. So you don't know what, 
you know, and if somebody's autism, they might be off by a month or two in their genetics easily. You can easily see that. That's fucking, that's that DNA leap year, homie, if you got autism. So, yeah, dude, it's springtime. That fella's in heat. That's what you're getting there. James is in heat, man. I'd get him a little bust post over in the corner. Get a little pair of, uh, um, get you a half of a mannequin and put some damn, uh, uh, Daisy Dukes on it. That's what I would do. And put that thing, you know, put a candle or two in a closet and let him get in there and pump on it. You know, you have to have a plan. But if you're just yelling, stop it, James, and he's out there just, you know, he's tugging on that little spunk whisker. That's Stop it, James, isn't going to help. You know, you're not a damn crossing guard, brother. Or hit him with some Narcan, brother. That'll shut anybody down. You know, they don't like to put all the different, you know, uses or whatever on the thing, but if I got a, you know, somebody in my area and they're over there splurging their little, uh, that little splash hammer right in front of me, I'll just damn hit them with that Narcan, baby. You know, let the Lord sort them out. Praise God. Baby, let's hear a little bit more. And thank you for the call, man. I'm sorry that you're having to deal with some of this. And I'm, I'm also afraid of some students because we found, we found a collection of, uh, almost like, a booger collection but it was it was other people's pictures that he t took from under a stairwell hmm. so but we've been working on stuff i don't know what to do with him well he might be damn an artist brother you can't you know it sounds like he's an artist so don't condemn him for that um you know i know they can't help it but every time i every time i look him in the eyes he's just Mm -hmm. He's just panting with that lustful. Um, he he'll smirk when he does it too. It's like he knows what he's doing. That's heat, brother. He's in heat, and that's somebody in heat. And so I think at that point you got to do prayer. You got to you got to consider Narcan. But I would do prayer first. And um, and yeah, and look, I just commend you, man, for being there and being there on the front lines of autism. This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. Give online therapy a try at betterhelp.com slash Theo and get on your way to being your best self. That's right. When you're at your best, you can do great things. You could build something new or create something new. You can feel comfortable enough to love somebody or, or love yourself maybe even. You can do all of that. But sometimes life gets you bogged down and you may feel overwhelmed or like you're not showing up in the way you want to. That happens. Working with a therapist can help you get closer to the best version of you and better help can connect you with that therapist. If you're thinking of giving therapy a try, it's convenient, flexible, affordable, and entirely online. It's better help. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Uh, if you want to live a more empowered life, therapy can get you there. Visit betterhelp.com slash Theo today to get 10% off your first month. That's better H E L P, uh, dot com slash Theo betterhelp.com slash Theo. Uh, let's hear some more. What else came in? Man, I was feeling Had a couple comedy sets last night. We had some sets. I forgot to tell you down in Louisiana. That was it was fun. A couple of them, the crowds were a little rowdy, but uh, the ones that weren't, my God, they were awesome. Man, they were awesome shows. I'm so thankful. It was so just cool to go through Louisiana. And we're over there, you know. And we went to Shreveport. Geez, Shreveport. That play. This it went out of business. I mean, they had, it was just, they had a building there. I was walking on the street. A building asked me for $40. So, all right, let's hear uh, this call that came in right here. Hey, Theo. 
I want to hear your opinion about something that happened to me at work recently. Uh, to give you a little background on me, I grew up with a gay mom, and she had a meth addiction. Mm. My brother's gay. My niece is a bisexual, transgender woman into polyamorous relationships. Damn. You living in a dang Skittle bowl, baby. Amen, brother. Onward. I'm not against any of it, honestly. Um, Same, bro. Same, baby. I want people to be true to themselves, you know? Mm -hmm. But it's all fun and games, man, until your boss, who's the HR manager, texts you unwanted propositions at a chili cook-off at work. Oh, yeah. Yeah, a lot of times food can be a gateway drug to uh, homosexuality. Let's hear more. Anyway, you and me are about the same age, and uh, things are for sure different than when we grew up. And with the current climate, how do you think I should approach this situation? We approach... Well, just because somebody's hitting on you, yeah, I think if you are gay or considering gay, and let me repeat that, if you are gay or considering gay, then you approach this man, return him, go do it, do the chili, do the chili with him, that's fine, nobody's, you know, I mean, you're probably, most of your family's gay. It sounds like it, you know, anybody that even stops by y'all's house ends up gay. To be honest, from what you said. So you could easily be gay, dude. You might be, you might not even be lonely. You might just be gay and be just gaying around bothering women. I'm not saying that, but it could be happening. Um, but I don't think you need to feel a pressure because of the way cl the climate is to return, uh, any homoerotic, uh, homoeroticism. You know, you, you don't have to do anything like that just because of the climate. You don't want, you know, just because there's a lot of gay stuff happening, you have to, you know, do that. Um, but also innately, some of these chili cook-off circles, it's a hotbed for gay activity. You know, it's a lot of men. It's all men doing it. They're wearing aprons. You see a lot of that. Uh, cutting onions. One of them's tearing up. One of them comes over. What's up? What's up? What's up, Henry? What's wrong? Nothing's fucking wrong, dude. He's out here with the damn devil's vegetables. That's what it is. I mean, onions, that's a, you know, my God. It's the Nicholas Sparks of fucking vegetables. I mean, when do we, when do we shut that shit down? Just, but yeah, that whole, the whole thing with the chili cook off. It's a hotbed for gay men to sneak in. And, you know, hit you with that little shishito pepper. You know? And just hit you with that little, uh, you know, let, let, just try to get you to sip off that little, uh, that little batter fountain. Off a little Bobby's little fondue railing, you know, you know what I'm talking about, wiener. So, uh, yeah, I think just take care of yourself either way. But also if you, you know, it may, you might be reading yourself wrong. Here's what I would do. I would get seven or eight of your friends. I would ask them all, am I gay? Do you think? Or on a scale of one to 10, don't even go all this, you know, put, get yourself a number and then walk out into the world and know. Thank you for the call, man. I love you. And we all love you. Um, what else do we have here? What's going on, Bill? It's Mike. And uh, it's that urban gentleman. What's up, Mike, baby? Urban Mike, baby. Welcome, baby. Praise God, son. Beige gang. Out of South Florida. Um, so uh, I was adopted at birth, man. And, uh, you know, I don't know anybody from my, my, you know, my biological side. And uh, 
I decided to do some searching and I found my uh I found my mother on Facebook and I found uh I found some bad news. She's uh she's locked up right now up north mm-hmm. uh for for a while. For quite a while. But um I d de- uh I decided to message her yesterday, man. I finally got the balls to message her. I was nervous, I didn't know how she'd respond, you know. And uh she she emailed me back this morning and it was real positive, you know, like everything she had to say was was real positive. It's just it's just it's crazy, man. It's crazy, you know, that's something I've dreamed about my entire life. Like every day since I can remember I dreamed of of being able to talk to my mother, man, and uh, she's gonna give me a call this uh, this afternoon. We're gonna talk on the phone for the first time. It's, uh, it's crazy, man. It's been 32 years since the last time I saw her. You know, so I don't know exactly. You know, I, I text my brother, my adopted brother, and let him know. And then the next thing I did was I hopped on the phone and gave you a call, man. I don't, you know, I don't know exactly why. I, but, you know, obviously we don't know each other, but I just I wanted to share that with you, man. Gang, brother. Man, thank you, bro. Thank you, man. This is uh, that's a nice, as a pa- It's just nice. You know, it's nice that there's something powerful going. There's something powerful going on in your life, and you thought, and you, your nature, whoever you are. You thought, hey, man, I'm feeling something. There's really something special going on. I'm going to share it with somebody else. Not even that it was with me, with this group. Uh, but this is a powerful moment. I'm going to share this with somebody else. Uh, that's awesome, man. Thank you for the call. Uh, you got me up in here, dog. You hit me in those. Man. My Tism James is a freaking... You got me in them damn mm, my little skeet almonds. These things are activated. Uh, you know, it's funny, man. You, because you sound like you're in a good place, man. This is just judgment from this call, but you sound like you're in a good place, and um, obviously, your mother probably. Isn't in the best place uh, with jail, but it sounds like you are going to be able to be there. You may have a chance to be for your mother what she wasn't for you, which and, and, and that you may be strong enough to do that. And that is, that's on God, man, I think. Yeah, I can't imagine, you know, waiting your whole, to talk to your mother, God. You know, all those times when you don't even realize as a child, as an offspring, as a creation of something that you need that thing to be there. And not even sometimes their voice, but even just in their presence to know that something is there to support you, like just like a wall, but like a wall that like loves you so matter so so much, no matter what, and a wall that's really a, also a door. Um, man, but it sounds like you you, however your life has worked out, that you sound healthy enough where you can you might be able to be whatever she never had in addition to you guys working out your mother-son relationship um and that's really that's that's what they guess amazing about life it's like what am i supposed to how can i be useful in this situation and me, I don't know if I could do that because I would probably look too much at my own plight. I'd be looking too much at, oh man, my mud this, and I don't know if I'd be able to turn that corner and say, honestly, hey, what is, why now are we back together and what, 
how do I look past my own angst or my own, you know, or you may not even have any more of that shit, but how do I rise above that to be whatever? How do I be a great son and an adult son? You know, I've had trouble evolving in that way and evolving from being just a son to being an, 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 an adult son. Um, it's funny. This is kind of a space that I'm in in my life. But man, I, and I didn't mean to talk about myself so much. It just it's powerful that you chose to share that with us, man. Man, you know how good that makes us feel? First of all, to have an urban guy call, an urban person that even fucking messes with us, bro. Praise God, dog. But even more than that, just that that you're like, "Hey, I I'm going to sh- I'm going to be that you let all of us, you let us enjoy that moment with you." You let us in on that, man. That, you know how much that it's going to give us something. It's going to give us a little bit more faith. That's going to get us through the next day, the next hour, the next. Some people just might be a minute, but it's going to give us something. It gives me a re- I want to believe that there's things out there that are working for good. That's cool, man. So excited for you, bro. Uh, if you get a chance, man, hit the hotline again. Um... I would just love to know how it went, you know? But if you are in that space where you say, hey, man, this is something powerful and I'm going to call, I'm going to share, I'm, I'm going to let this be a part of this ambiance of this show, man, that means a lot. And, um, yeah, we'll connect. And let me see if maybe there's, some, if there's something nice we could do to help out or help her. I don't know. Uh, but somehow... Even though, even though it was giving you up or what, I don't know all, I don't know any of it, but she, she helped make a good son. You know, she helped make a good son somehow. Um, so man. You know, it, this stuff I guess makes me want to be alive. It makes me want to be alive. You know, it's those moments, man, where you fucking something, you feel something. God, that shit is high. That is a high, bro. That is a high, bro. Praise God, baby. Thank you for calling in. Um... I don't know. I mean, what you know? What else are we gonna say? Um. Uh. Yeah. That's you know. I feel like it's just a good place to 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 finish the show today. This show's been all over the place. I've been feeling all over the place, but that's okay. I'm I'm grateful to be here with you guys. I'm grateful. We're gonna be add more. We're gonna try to get over to England. We got. We're gonna try to get to everywhere. You know, uh, we're putting the shows out as we can. Um, next week we'll have some new shows going up in, uh, I think in St. George, Utah or Springdale, Utah. Uh, we're figuring some of that out. If you have a plan to be down there, um, that will be around, uh, the second week of July, second weekend. Um, let's go out the way that we didn't even come in. Uh, we'll just close it out, man. A lot of neat stuff. Uh, I don't know what else to say. Uh, maybe we've said enough. Um, I don't know. I feel like there's something else I'm supposed to be telling you guys. But to all the people out there struggling with these, with the uh, the stuff in the Midwest and the, the fear and stuff like that, it's scary. You know, it's scary to think that um, that this template of the world we we sometimes we feel, especially in America, like our environment, that the world, the government, all this is is going to take care of us. And when that doesn't happen, it's very scary because we realize we're just this being in this in this in this template 
of society that we've created and that if some of that structure fails us or doesn't do us right, we're still sitting there responsible for our, ourselves. Uh, and that's very scary. So my heart goes out to the people that are in fear of that. And uh, what else, man? I j oh, man, I don't know. I've been jerking off, but I don't want to be. So it's been getting better. It's been getting better, and that's all we can ask. Oh, you guys be good to yourselves, man. Um, you deserve it, and we will. Let's go out with some Bishop Gun. Um, uh, actually, you know what? Let's go out with some uh, North Mississippi All Stars Drunk Outdoors. Let's do that, man. Um, this what a fun group to go see, man. They're always torn. If you get to check them out, and uh. You got some dollars, don't you tell them we gon' ride Let me holler at you, step outside I'm in the trunk out the trunk The smoke and drunk outdoors I feel on dirty dance floors The smoke and drunk outdoors Now we're cooking with gas on the front burner Lainey Wilson uh, is dating someone, so I'm not trying to spread her news, but everybody's been asking me about it, and um, that's, that's that.